Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to multiply radicals and rationalize the denominator. When you're multiplying or dividing radicals, you can use the product or the quotient property as long as the index, which is that value of n, is identical. They have to have the same index, and then you can multiply or divide those radicands as necessary. Now, in example one, we're going to multiply the radicals. And remember, we're assuming that all of our variables are positive real numbers. Here we just have individual terms that we're multiplying together. So we have negative 2 times the square root of 6 times 4 times the square root of 3. We're going to rearrange these factors so that we have our coefficients together and our radicals together. So we have negative 2 times 4, and then we have square root of 6 times the square root of 3. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And then we use the product property on the square root of 6 times the square root of 3, which gives us the square root of 18. Now, we're not finished. Square root of 18 can be simplified because the square root of 18 is the same as 9 times 2, and we can take the square root of 9. So we'd get negative 8 times 3 square root of 2. And again, we multiply those coefficients, and we have negative 24 square root of 2. Now look at example 2, where we have a monomial times a binomial, one term times two terms. We're going to distribute 3 times the square root of 14 to each of these two terms. So we have 3 square root of 14 times 2 square root of 21 plus 3 square root of 14 times negative 3 square root of 7. Remember, when you're simplifying, you can multiply the coefficients together. So 3 times 2 is 6. And then you have your square roots together. Square root of 14 times the square root of 21. And again, look at the second 2. We have 3 times a negative 3, so negative 9. And then we have the square root of 14 and the square root of 7. Now notice that I didn't multiply those square roots together right away. That's because I noticed right away I have a radicand of 14 and a radicand of 21 here in the front. When I multiply those, it's going to be a huge number, and I'm probably going to struggle trying to simplify it. So instead, I'll teach you a trick. Our coefficient of 6 stays, and then we know that we can put 14 times 21 together inside of this radical because of the product property. But we also know we can factor these numbers. 14 is 2 times 7, and 21 is 7 times 3. Okay, I know, you can see what's happening. Let's do it with the, the second set. Our coefficient of 9 stays on the outside, and then inside our radicand is 2 times 7 for that 14, and times 7 because 7 is prime for our second radical. Okay, I know what you saw. In this first radical, we have 7 times 7. That's 7 squared. Well, 49, perfect square, we can pull that 7 out. So this becomes 6 times 7, and then the square root of 2 times 3, which is 6. And then that second square root, we have 7 times 7 again. So we can pull that out, and we have 9 times 7 for our coefficient. And that radical just has a 2 left behind. Multiply those coefficients together. So we have 6 times 7, which is 42, square root of 6. And the second term, 9 times 7, 63, square root of 2. See how much easier it was to simplify those radicands before we combined them? That's my favorite trick. Okay, in problem three, we have 
binomial times a binomial. So we have two terms times two terms. So we need to FOIL. So we're multiplying the first two terms together. So we have 9 square root of a times the square root of a. Then we multiply the outermost. So minus the square root of b times the square root of a. Then we multiply these innermost. So negative 3 square root of b times 9 square root of a. And then our very last terms. So negative 3 square root of b oops, times the square root, ooh, times the negative square root of b. My crazy parentheses cause some issues. OK, just go piece by piece and simplify. So our very first term, we have a coefficient of 9. And then we have square root of a times square root of a. Well, that would be the square root of a squared. OK? Our next two, we can use that product property. And we have the square root of a, b. Our third term here, multiply those coefficients. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. Use the product property with the radicands, and we have the square root of a, b. And then our very last term, we have a negative 3. And I know it's a little sloppy. This is a negative square root of b, which is the same as negative 1 square root of b. Remember, math always has that invisible 1 with multiplication. So negative 3 times a negative 1 is a positive 3. And the radicands, uh, square root of b times square root of b, is the square root of b squared. OK, let's keep on going left to right, and we're going to simplify. Coefficient stays as 9. Square root of a squared is a. Notice the next two terms. They're like radicands. They have the same index, their square roots, and the radicands are the same a, b. So we can combine them. So we have negative 1 and negative 27, which is negative 28, square root of a, b. And then our last term. We have a coefficient of 3, and the square root of b squared is just b. So that simplified to 9a minus 28 times the square root of ab plus 3b. OK, remember from our times of factoring that we would factor the difference of squares. And this was also called the product of conjugates. This is very important with rationalizing a denominator. Notice what happens and what a conjugate is. So when you multiply these two conjugates, you're left with the first term squared minus the second term squared. And remember what the conjugates are. The first term in each are identical. And the last term is the same, just they have opposite signs. And when you do that, remember, you get the difference of squares. You're going to see how important this is when we go to rationalize denominators. And then you can also recall the square of a binomial. So when you square either of these binomials, you end up with a perfect square trinomial. So let's look at these first two examples where we're using the product of conjugates. The first example, we have 3 plus x times 3 minus x. Both of them have the same first term, 3. And they both have the same last term, x, and their signs are different, positive and negative. So this product of conjugates would become 3 squared minus x squared. And we simplify that because 3 squared is 9 and minus x squared. OK, notice that in question 2, things look the same. Just our first term is the square root of 3. So what happens? We have the square root of 3 squared, which is the same as square root of 3 times the square root of 3, right? Minus that last term squared. Well, remember, square root of 3 times square root of 3 
is the same as the square root of 3 squared. And when you take the square root of something squared, you're left with just the base of 3. So notice what happens when we multiply the conjugates in example 2. No more radical. Our radicals are gone. That is what we need to do when we rationalize a denominator. So rationalizing a denominator means to write the quotient, remember quotient is a fraction, without a radical expression in the denominator. It's bad math grammar to have a radical in the denominator, so we need to multiply by the conjugate in order to get rid of that. Now if we have one term in our denominator, it's not really called a conjugate, we're just multiplying by a ratio of one that's going to eliminate that radical. We're going to do that here in example one. First we're going to use that quotient property which allows us to break up that radical from the numerator and the denominator. So now you can clearly see that we have the square root of two in the denominator. And because that's bad math grammar, we need to get rid of it. And to get rid of a square root of two, you multiply by a square root of two. But remember, whenever you multiply a denominator by something, you have to multiply the numerator by the exact same thing. Remember that this is the same as multiplying by 1. And if we multiply by 1, we're not changing the meaning. So we multiply by 1, and we have the square root of a cubed times the square root of 2 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have the square root of 2 times 2. Well look, our denominator simplifies to just 2. And our numerator simplifies. The square root of a cubed is a square root of a times the square root of 2. Well, they have the same index, so these two radicands can be multiplied together within one square root symbol. We always put the coefficient first. So it's a times the square root of 2a over 2. We rationalize the denominator. We got rid of the radical. Now look at what happens when we have to rationalize the denominator and we have two terms in the denominator. This is when you need that conjugate. And remember, the conjugate is the first term is the same, the last term is the same, and you just change the sign. So square root of 5 minus 3 has the conjugate square root of 5 plus 3. And we have to multiply by 1, so our numerator has to be multiplied by the exact same thing. Now let's combine those two fractions. Multiply straight across, we have negative 12 times the square root of 5 plus 3 over, remember we're multiplying conjugates, so we have our first term times itself minus our second term squared. Let's simplify that denominator first. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, or it's just 5, minus 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, in the numerator, we need to distribute the negative 12 to both of these terms. So we get negative 12 times the square root of 5, and we get negative 12 times 3, or negative 36. Okay, let's keep simplifying. Our numerator doesn't simplify much more right now. It's negative 12 square root of 5 minus 36 over our denominator, 5 minus 9, which is negative 4. Now because we have two terms in the numerator, we can split this up into two separate fractions. The first term, negative 12 square root of 5 over that denominator of negative 4. The second term, minus 36 over that denominator of negative 4. 
and we can simplify each of these fractions individually. So negative 12 and negative 4 share negative 4 in common, right? So that simplifies to 3 square root of 5 because negative 12 is negative 4 times 3. Now negative 36 divided by negative 4, that's going to become positive. And 36 is 4 times 9, so we're left with a 9. So rationalizing the denominator here, we're left with 3 square root of 5 plus 9. Now let's look at, I guess, an application problem. We're finding the exact area of this rectangle. Remember that area is equal to the length times the width. So we're having to multiply two radicals together. So we have the square root of 28 times 3 square root of 2. Now notice that we can simplify the square root of 28. That is 7 times 4. And 4 is a perfect square, so this simplifies to 2 square root of 7 times 3 square root of 2. Remember, I prefer to do that before multiplying those radicands together because we don't want to end up with a big number we're trying to simplify. Now we can multiply the coefficients together. 2 times 3 is 6. And then we have the radicals, square root of 7 times square root of 2. They have the same index. They're both square roots. So we can combine them into one radical. It's the square root of 14. And we can't forget our unit of measurement. We found the area, so we multiplied feet times feet, so we have feet squared, or square feet. So the exact area, which means to leave it in a simplified radical, is 6 square root of 14 square feet. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, I hope that you will check out my other math videos.